It's 8.38. Good morning to you. This is Breakfast with Stephen and Anne. And we're going to go through some of the stories in the newspapers today with the deputy editor of Spiked, Fraser Myers, and author and broadcaster, sorry, Nikki Hodgson. Sorry, I had a cup of, a cup of coffee a minute it's ago. Very it's very hot. too hot. <laughs> very, very hot. Um, look, Fraser, let's start. We've got, a, we've got a, a video of this, actually, which is horrifying, actually. A star of David graffitied on the doors of several homes oh. in Berlin. Berlin. So this is the very, very chilling return of the world's oldest hatred. And it will resonate with people a lot more as it's happening in Germany, famously the you know, perpetrators mm. of you know, the worst uh, anti-Semitic atrocity of all time. Uh, Germany has actually had a bit of a lingering uh, anti-Semitism problem in recent years. Uh, people may recall a couple of years ago what an advisor to the government told Jewish people not to wear um, their kippers in certain places. Uh, anti-Semitic attacks have been uh, on the rise in general. And now, following the um, atrocities in, in Israel committed by Hamas, uh, it seems as if it's now sort of spiralling out of control. There's been at least four cases of people's houses um, being spray-painted with uh, stars of, of David, you know, letting people know that Jewish people uh, live in these uh, apartments. Uh, the authorities have warned that there could be uh, terror attacks inspired by Hamas on, on Jewish buildings. Uh, so, really, you know, there's a, a problem that we have to get to grips with here. You know, we're seeing the return of something very nasty and very dangerous. It's just so devastating. I mean, I've been hearing reports this week of people taking down the misusers, you know, that you have on a doorframe that has mm. the Torah scroll mm. in that is... I mean, it's part of your faith to sort of touch it and to remind yourself of God, basically, when you come in and leave your home. But people are taking them down for their own safety yes, in like and, North and there London. Are several mm. Jewish uh, faith schools in Britain now yep. mm. that are closed, and those that are open are telling their, their youngsters to take their... not to wear their blazers, yeah. because their blazers have, have yeah. the Star of David on them. It's so upsetting. It's, it should go back to like that. This, should it? Uh, do you remember years ago seeing a clip of Jerry Springer Mm. saying that his father, because uh, they were evacuees, his father's generation were evacuees, um, and he always had an old van in the garage that he always checked, always checked worked, always had fuel in it, and was lots of, in case they ever needed to run. Oh, God. And you remember thinking, this is 20-odd years ago, yeah. and thinking, oh, God, isn't that awful that he's still living with that horror? And now you can see why. I don't think you ever get over something like that. No. It, and you pass it on to other generations when things like this happen. It becomes part of, you know, your makeup to okay. worry that much. Well, and you have to think there are youngsters on both sides of the conflict at mm. the moment who will never forget what's happening Absolutely. to them now. Yeah. Never. Um, OK, let's move on to the Observer, should we? Um, it, it, it was in the papers yesterday mm. that... Carrie was the real Prime Minister when Boris was in charge. <laughs> Some people thought it was Dominic Cummings, but no, it wasn't. Um, the man who, who... This was all in WhatsApp messages that have been released. Um, Simon Case... Um, Chief civil servant. Chief civil servant. He's, he's going to have to answer questions on this now. Yes, he is, but, you know, it's the gift that keeps on giving, isn't it? <laughs> um, basically, yeah, Simon Case has said that, you know, he described the government as a tragic joke back in the day during the pandemic on WhatsApp, and apparently he's going to be questioned further over a so-called treasure trove of messages which also reveal more about the machinations of number 10. Um, so, he's, you know, there are several messages with him saying that, yeah, uh, Boris Johnson's wife, Carrie, appeared to be the real person in charge of the government, and another message saying, I was always, always told that Dom, as in Dominic Cummings, uh, was the secret PM. How wrong they are. I look forward to telling Select Committee tomorrow. Don't worry about Dom. The real person in charge is Carrie. So, I mean, you know, it's very, very damning. And I, I, I mean, I guess part of the problem is, or maybe part of the reason these messages are being aired, yes, OK, they've got to be looked at by the committee looking into Partygate, but they also seem like they're going to annihilate Boris Johnson's chance of ever returning in politics. Yeah. Because, basically, if he wasn't even strong enough to rule <laughs> as he was elected and he was letting his wife do it, then that's not democracy, Yeah, but is it? these nasty... I mean, one, some would say bitchy messages <laughs> from Simon Case to others on his WhatsApp group spark of misogyny, don't they? I think people have people have said that. I mean, I'd, I'd like to call her Carrie Antoinette, I think is... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, people have said it's sexist to say that she's uh, really in charge. I think what? It's, what? as, as um, you know... As Nikki said, I think it's more a sign of Boris's... Yeah, view. I think it's the more about that. that. He is so spineless that, you know, people famously say that he is convinced by whoever the last person he spoke to, yeah. that's, who, that's whose advice he's, he's going to listen to. But, I mean, these are allegations, I should say, but it, it, Lord Ashcroft uh, wrote a book about um, Carrie Simmons, Carrie Johnson, 
Um, and he alleged that he, sometimes she would literally take his phone, pretend to be the prime minister and send out messages. So these are not uh, without merit, these kinds of, uh, uh, you know, accusations. I don't know. I'm, 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 why do you think I'm just misogyny? uneasy about it because I just think... I, I mean, some, in some of his other messages, he says, I just can't cope with this. And you think, well, what sort of a wimp is he? I want to know. <laughs> I'm, I'm more it's inclined true. to think the worse of him rather than Carrie. Is that not misandry? Yeah, it might be. <laughs> there are I also, don't know. There are, I mean, there are some key issues, you know, at the sort of tail end of that government where you could see the, the Carrie view of the world was uh, winning out, so to speak. I mean, possibly the most... Uh, infamous um, incident was in Afghanistan where uh, yeah. you know, oh, the, 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 dogs. Yeah. the dogs, the government yeah. evacuated dogs and cats ahead of people. Now, Carrie is famously a, a sort of animal rights activist. Um, that hasn't been attributed directly to her, but a lot of people suspect that she will have played a role in that. Mm. There was also rows over how the government should tackle wokeness. Carrie is seen as someone who's particularly woke. Um, Boris isn't, but he still was uh, made to feel uneasy in public about, you know, challenging uh, wokeness in the civil service. Um, and the gold wallpaper, of course. The gold wallpaper. How much was that? Yeah. £60 pounds a roll or something? No, more than that. Was it that? Yeah. More than oh, 100 no. It was something like £800 pounds a roll what? or something, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. Well, exactly. And they had £60 a part pounds a roll designer in wallpaper. That's right. Yeah. 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 I don't have any of that yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know how much it costs. OK, let's uh, <laughs> stick it with politics, then, from, all, from the old PM to the new. Um, uh, Rishi Sunak, he does... You know, if if you like him as a prime minister or not, what he can't do is speak in public. Mm. He's not he's not a good performer. Uh, I've said this time and time again. But he has decided to release another video, which is um, you. I haven't seen it. You two say it's cringe. It's We've been laughing our heads off. Yeah. Have we got it? I think we've got it. Yeah, we have. Let's have a look. Hello, how are you? I'm Rishi. Hello. We'll get some tea in a minute. And pause How was your five-point plan going? Brutally honest, how many of you have picked up that I've got these five priorities that I'm trying to focus on? No, I haven't. No. <laughs> oh, dear. No, I have to say, that's not as bad as I thought. I mean, well, it, it you need to watch more of it. And he, has some more, you know, he does have the reverse Midas touch when it comes to talking <laughs> and communicating to the public. Yeah. He, yeah. Can come he can come across as a sort of primary school teacher. Absolutely. He, sort of, yeah. he speaks slowly, deliberately. Yeah. He speaks down to people. Um, it yeah, seems I very patronising, doesn't it? And also, yeah. I just was wondering, where do you get a coffee shop that has posh coffee and sarsen's vinegar on the yeah. table? Because I've never seen that. And, <laughs> no. and that twiddly no. music and the and the open-closed yeah. sign. It's on the, just so forced, the exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Do they appear to have Wayne Rooney sat in there. <laughs> yes, they did. I mean, <laughs> the thing is, you've got to play to your strengths as a leader, right? So, mm. if, I don't understand what his campaign team, team are doing. He's not yeah. good at being the down-to-earth guy. He isn't that person. Yeah. He lives a rarefied life. He's got this posh holiday home in California. I mean, he's just, you know, he's very, very rich. And there's something about him that so is not down to So what's he trying to, to prove earth. in this video, that he gets on down there and talks to ordinary people? Well, he's trying to get, he's, make sure that everybody understands the five pledges. pledges. But the way it's done is just, it's just so shoehorned. It's not organic. You never have a natural conversation like well, that. Gather... No, but I'll tell you what, though, I know people are being critical of, of him. This isn't anything to do with him, is it? This is a team going, oh, PM, this is well, what we want you to do. Well, absolutely, that as yeah. well. But what are they doing? They're, what are they they're doing? totally out of touch. Yeah. He probably got paid a fortune. What did Alistair Campbell think of it? Um, I mean, he's, <laughs> not, he's, he, he's not a fan. <laughs> I mean, he said there are, you know, real issues for the Prime Minister to address while he's making glossy videos, but, I mean, he would say that, wouldn't he? Um, you know, I just... Yeah, yeah, as, as, yeah. as Nikki said, this is not to Rishi's strength. I mean, do you remember he used to make all those glossy videos during the pandemic and yeah. make all these... People who followed him on social media would see he'd do all these photoshopped images of Eat Out to help out. You know, it's, it's right, sort of, yeah. he has this sort of, uh, I don't know, Instagram influencer style. Isn't he also the one that did a, a bit it's of talking in the back of a car without a seatbelt on? Well, yes, yeah, that did. got him into trouble. So he's made a few mistakes with his <laughs> PR it's, company. It's also a bit like when his wife at the conference said that he was gushingly, he, they were best friends. It's like, it's just so tonally wrong. It doesn't sit with. I don't think it sits it's with the voters. It's just trying too hard. It is try. Yeah. It is try hard. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Oh well. Should we have another video? Because <laughs> we're sort of video tastic this time. Um, Nikki, this one. This one's yours. Uh, <laughs> and it's it, it's upsetting a lot of people. It's a video from uh, Mark Jacobs, who's a designer, apparently. Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh. Is that deliberate? 
It's the, oh, well, no wonder if she's wearing those no shoes. shoes. But, but <laughs> oh, so that's obsessing a lot of people. The model people, has fought, <laughs> deliberately fallen down the stairs like that as part of a fashion video. She looks like a terrible actress. <laughs> that doesn't look convincing at all, no. does it? Well, the thing is, I mean, she must, does she have some stunt experience? Because it must she really must, hurt yeah. going downstairs no, she, like that. She must. She's got yeah. a little padded suit on underneath but the outfit. What's it trying to say about the suit? Well, this is what I think. It, what is you it trying fall to down say? down the street and you won't show <laughs> Yeah, or it's like, get as drunk as you want, wear what shoes you yeah. want, wear our clothes, and you won't come out with any injuries or something. I don't know. I'm not saying that she's drunk, <laughs> meant to look drunk in the video, but I just think fashion, if you've got to go somewhere like that with a video, you've run out of ideas. Yes. Haven't you? Yes. Well, Isn't the fact that your clothes are beautiful or if they're utilitarian, they're that, or if they're, you know, obviously Marc Jacobs is targeted at a very young audience, even though I've got a bag, I'm way too old for it. But, I mean, so kids I don't understand it. This, then, yeah, they? and I guess, like, what they're trying to do is imitate this kind of, you know... The style of yeah. video that you see on TikTok, but again, I just think it's trying. Yeah, hard. but come on, the pro the issue is, I, mean, I agree with you entirely. What on earth does it prove? But it's gone viral. Yes. And well, maybe that's all they care about. I saw it. Maybe I saw it just scrolling through uh, Instagram the other day, and I just thought someone had fallen over. It didn't <laughs> make me think. Uh, I'm going to go out and buy this designer bag. I mean, I probably wouldn't have bought it anyway. It's $800 uh, for people at home, so no. don't fall over in it. No, I think it would make me think. Well, it serves right for him. Just don't wear those shoes, shoes, dear. Yeah. 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 I got a cut price from TK Maxx, just want to say that. Oh, Didn't oh. pay the full thing. <laughs> no, you never want to pay full price. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, they... Well, look, we're talking about it and it's gone viral yeah. and that's, that's what they want, so they'll be counting... That's a success, won't they? Well, we've, we've given it airtime. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> Meanwhile... Yeah, well, thank you for throwing this to me. Yeah, <laughs> the cost of loving, according to the Daily Star. Loving. Apparently, we are uh, even though we're suffering from the cost of living crisis, we still want to make love. Of course we do. So what do we need when we make love? Condoms. <laughs> Can't afford them, so nick them. That's what the Daily Star is saying. <laughs> Fraser, take over. The, the Daily Star isn't isn't advising. Oh, look at the headline. <laughs> Bonkers. Bonkers. Yeah, very good. But supermarkets are now having to put uh, condoms in lock boxes because of the you know the shoplifting crisis. Uh, people might know that there's been a huge explosion in shoplifting over the past couple of years, and uh, now they're worried that condoms are being stolen as well. The Daily Star describes these people stealing condoms as randy pilferers, which is <laughs> yeah, very, very good. Fantastic tabloid uh, turn of phrase. Um, oh. I think probably what's really happening is it's often, you know, people say that, oh, you know, stealing, shoplifting is people um, being poor. You know, you hear about baby formula and things like that being stolen. Usually, actually, the products that are targeted are things that have a long shelf life. Mm -hmm. So that's why baby formula is targeted and not other food when things are shot. So much of the condoms have a long shelf life. Yeah, it's this. And condoms it. have a long shelf life. They don't. They do expire. So do check <laughs> yeah. uh, if you don't want a nasty <laughs> surprise. But you know they have a long shelf life. So there's something that they they have resale value. Um, so gangs and gangs, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's people... the shoplifting crisis now. It's not oh, equally no, no, right. No, but it's a lot of it is actually well, orchestrated yeah, by gangs. Going in with bin wheelies, people go in, just steal. picking everything, yeah. and, and then, then selling it on. Well, they're still... dodgy people on street corners going, "Do you want something for the weekend?" Mm. Yeah. Apparently. Well, and you know, at the moment, <laughs> if you steal something under two hundred pounds, it's very unlikely that the police will take action. You're not going <laughs> to uh, uh, get a conviction. So there is a, basically a free for all. What is the world coming to? I have to say there that... There always has been, hasn't it? Is what I was going I, to say. I, I, I just sort of think this is a non-story, because anyone... <laughs> there'll, there'll, be, there'll be thousands of people... It's in the Daily Star. Yeah, but there'll be thousands of people going... But they've had condoms in lockboxes for years. Yeah, well, I think that yeah, is true. Yeah. Yes, they have done. Mm. Well, years and years and years and years. The Daily Star front page is about the likelihood of a zombie apocalypse. <laughs> in, in Leeds. In, in Leeds, yeah. This was secondary so, news. So you, <laughs> so you pick your newspaper if you want to. <laughs> Meanwhile, Nikki, uh, I think we've got just time to tell uh, about this, this man who lives in Sussex who <laughs> is in trouble with the Water Authority. Mm. They're suing him and he's counter-suing. What's it all about? Well, I think it's quite smart. Obviously, we're in... We've got this water crisis, the state of our water is a mess, the state of our rivers is a mess, and this guy, Mike Deacon, has decided to um, countersue Southern Water. Basically, he's stopped paying his bills, they're taking him to court to get the money, and he's countersuing them for not actually providing the service and the quality of the water that he um, requires. And the reason he knows about this is because he monitors pollution because he's a, uh, a fisher. So he's been mm. monitoring pollution for 13 years in um, the River Ouse in Sussex, and he absolutely knows that they, you know, they've fallen short. Mm. I actually quite like this story. I think it's quite a good idea. I, I mean, it's, it's quite risky doing it. It, but mm. if but you were, if you've got the gumption, you might. I mean, I think it's great. Yeah, because he's not. It's because he is paying, but he's only paying one pound a month. 
Yeah, so, so there's got to be a legal thing that's well, I am paying something. I think, yeah, the, maybe he's kind of like cleverly circumventing something about so, stopping yeah. payments altogether. But yeah, I mean, it is one way to show that you don't accept the service. And why should you, in a way? If you're not oh, being given the service, why should you pay for it? to our water companies. Yeah. Good yeah. for him. Yeah. And yeah. these are the people, the water companies, <laughs> it's fair to say. Oh, well, yeah, they're not doing any of us any favours. And it does change, it needs to come. Yeah, absolutely. Well, there you go. Uh, look, it's been really good to see you both this Thank morning. You. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. Um, Go and check your expiry dates, <laughs> both of you. But I, mean, I must say, you've done a grand job because it's very hard to, to find uplifting stories as well at the moment, isn't it? Mm, it is, and uh, I don't know if the weather's going to uplift you or not. Let's find out from Jonathan.